Welcome, sisters. I am so excited for this year's Sisters event and our launch into our new four-week study. This happened last year with The Pursuit, and now, again, we have another year with a message at Sisters that actually launches us into a sister study this year called The Hope. And I want to tell you a little bit about the contents that we'll go through in the four weeks that you'll be together, or five weeks, or forever, if you want to meet forever, (laughs) in your groups, because we become family in those groups. You are going to be looking at week one, your hope that's in Christ. But in week two, we're going to know the hope of what we have in Christ, and we're going to expect to be enriched. Week three, you're going to know the hope that you can expect to be empowered by God's Spirit. It's pretty good. And week four, we finish off with probably my favorite, so don't skip out and not finish out your study. Week four will be the hope of a bright future because we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and we have an eternal hope. Amen? Yes. It's going to be amazing. So join a group. Get in a hope group and meet some new girlfriends. I would love it if you would. So as I said, we're launching out the study, the hope from this message. Anybody ever dealing with discouragement lately? That uh, It's all around me. A lot of people that are really discouraged with the situation. So this message, lean in, it's for you. Okay, it's been for me. The Lord has been teaching me, and it's very personal to my heart. And so we're going to talk tonight about how we can live with the heart of hope. So it's going to be, well, I need this, right? It's going to be good. Let's lean in. Our key verse is in Romans 8. These will be verses 24 and 25. And Paul says to us, hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, it says we wait for it patiently. (laughs) Patiently. (laughs) We're all waiting for something, aren't we? All the time for waiting. Waiting, wanting to see, see some positive sign that things are going to work out in some situation, anything. Get just, I, I want to see it. We want it instant. Give it to me now. I don't want to wait. Waiting is incredibly difficult, isn't it? It is not easy. I don't consider myself to be incredibly a patient woman. I, I know this because when I see a long line, I will do anything in the world to avoid it. Do you do this? Slow traffic, it, it really disturbs my soul, okay? <laughs> Waiting on internet browsers to first world problems I know, but feel my pain. This is, this is not easy. Restaurant, restaurant waiting to get seated. Okay, it's okay unless you're extremely hungry, which is usually always the case. And there was a particular year, it happened to be Valentine's, that Craig and I decided we're going out uh, to dinner at a nice restaurant, yet we didn't make reservations. Have you ever done this? It's a mistake. (laughs) We did not make reservations, ladies. So we're going... um, to our, first res- to our first restaurant, of course, it's 45-minute wait. No way are we going to stay there. Next restaurant, it's an hour wait. It only gets worse. It's an hour 15 at the next one. And the next one is another 45 minutes. And we are getting hangry. We are, this, it is not a nice drive on a Valentine's <laughs> evening. I am not kidding you. I literally am serious. We ended up eating our dinner at Taco Bell. (laughs) It's not a comedy joke. This really happened. We never go out again after that for Valentine's dinner on the 14th, ever. And that may be why now we just just don't really get into Valentine's Day. We don't like waiting, okay? Who considers himself a patient person? 
Really, I mean, raise your hand, Bill, don't feel shy, raise it. Okay, we've got one. <laughs> that's amazing, that's amazing. She's the most godly woman of all of us. Come on up and share what you have to say. <laughs> it's a fruit of the Spirit. Come on, where, where's the patience? Okay, we, sh- we should have some. I don't like it that I need to grow in this area, but we do. And as I've thought about patience, I've realized this is a big marker of spiritual maturity right here. So much of our walk with Jesus is about patient endurance because this world is broken and it is not easy. It is jacked up. And so we need to know how to have patient endurance. It's what all the great saints of old even had right? So we're going to talk about how we can live with the heart of hope, but how do we do this when hope is waiting before we see, waiting patiently? How do we do it? And and I said this, this message really hits home for me. I've had to walk this out, and I'm walking it out personally and what I'm waiting for, and I'm walking it out with you, so many of you, my girlfriends, and it's not easy because I'm waiting. I've been waiting and praying and, and burdened and, and, and believing by faith for healing for these babies, mighty Mia to be healed of cancer. I've been praying, pleading with Jesus for healing for little Griffin. I've been waiting for my friend's daughter to recover from her depression. I've been waiting for another friend who is who we fought for two years in prayer for her marriage to be restored. We've been waiting and waiting for my girlfriend to get a good job after she lost hers. And we've been waiting, of course, for my daughter Mandy's health, for her to recover her health again. I've also been waiting very closely with the friend who's been waiting for nine years with the son who's addicted to drugs and And when I say this, this message is something that I'm walking out and living out right now, and I know so many of you will as well be be right here where I am and saying, Amy, yes, I understand. I'm waiting too. And in fact, Amy, I don't see any signs of hope, and I am really discouraged. I So many of you have told me that you are about to give up on something because you're so tired of waiting. So we're, if we're going to learn to wait well, I mean, <laughs> if we're going to learn about a, having a heart of hope, we've got to learn to wait well, okay? Because remember, hope that is seen is not hope. That's not hope. We have to wait for it. And if we're going to have a heart of hope, we got to learn how to wait well. And I just found out that a lot of you, like me, need to learn how to wait well. <laughs> okay? But it's hard because then there's, there's Bible stories like Paul and Silas, right? Has anybody heard a great sermon about Paul and Silas and their amazing jailbreak prison? They, they miraculously are, are broken out of the prison gates through an earthquake. These guys have been preaching Jesus. They get beaten up, thrown into prison, and in less than 24 hours at the midnight hour, they are praying, they are singing songs to the Lord. It is the best story. And the earthquake happens, their chains fall off, and it's immediate victory. Prison, no more. We are chains no more. We're free. It's It's in less than 24 hours. There's no weight in that. It's amazing. It's a great story. And it it tells you, okay, praise God and pray. But let me tell you something that we often forget about, about Paul. He was in prison for over five years of his ministry. He got out of prison that night in 24 hours, but he had over five years of his life chained Don't forget it. There's waiting, and sometimes we get the immediate, and it's awesome. We pray, and it's like the next day. God did it. And then sometimes, and really often, we wait a long time. And there's there's some learning to do in that. 
what does our impatience even say about us anyway? Okay, I process that. And I'm thinking, I think it means I'm trying to be God. I think it means I'm, I'm saying that I know what's best. I think it's my impatience is saying I'm not trusting my Father the way that I should. I think it means I'm resisting His ways in the process, in the refining fire that, that waiting often puts us in. So sisters, if we want to live with a heart of hope, we have to learn how to wait well. And I have four points for us about waiting well that I didn't just come up and write this, okay, here's some points, some ideas. I prayed and I asked God, show me how do we wait well, okay? So these are what he's taught us, okay? The first one is the big one. The first one makes all the other ones even better. They ha- it has to be applied to every other point. The first is that we are going to wait with the mind of the Spirit. This is big. Like I um, think that a lot of you may know about through, through Craig sharing it at, at church a few times, our daughter Mandy has been now about a year and a half uh, struggling with chronic illness. And, you know, I have my own mother's perspective I want to share with you about this, okay? Um, it, it was disappointing, like it would be for any of us, when you find out you have mono and you are uh, days away from your wedding, okay? But, you know, God is good. It's, you know, it's going to be okay. Let's just, we'll, I took it all in stride. We're walking through this with her. God is good. Get the B12 shot. Get some energy. You're going. And, but it's, it's been so hard because month after month, we don't see improvement. Okay, I know mono can take a while. It's okay. So really, my spirits were good. Mandy's attitude was amazing. But here's what happened. At month after month after month, uh, then there ended up being some additional complications with their health that were not related to this original virus. And then, okay, well, we'll deal with that. Month goes by, month goes by, month goes by. There's another, there's a sort of blood work that comes back that's very alarming. And I remember it was just this last Valentine's. What is it with Valentine's Day? <laughs> that I end up just shattered in tears because this blood work was so alarming. And so I... Uh, we go on, and it's like, okay, but really, my spirits, I have faith. I'm a woman of faith, so I'm like, we're okay. We're going to get through this, and, and, there, and God brought encouragement along the way, so I'm like, okay, this is okay, and, and I really w- was walking through it, you know, full of hope. A few months down the road, it's May, and Mandy has another issue that comes up that has to do with her tummy, and her tummy was not holding down food, so okay, run this test. Okay, it's not that. Uh, Mom, I'm just sure. She says, I'm just sure that this is what it is. I've researched. I have all the symptoms. We run that test, and it's not that. And so we get the call when she shares this. this. The test shows that it wasn't, this isn't what's going on. And it was on that call that, that I just, my hope just went dropped down to zero. And I was just so weary and done with all of it. Why, God? I don't understand. What is going on with her body? Why is this happening? And I just was like, no hope. Hope was gone. And then I'm stinking frustrated, and I just I immediately am in prayer with my head down, I'm just in prayer, and I'm like, Father, here I am. I've been writing a study and meditating on hope, writing a study on hope, and I don't have any hope. Everything I've taught, I don't have it. What's going on? You know, as God would have it, the thing that you work on and uh, try to teach on, 
is where you have to walk. So, what happened was a few hours later, I had been memorizing, a verse came to my mind, and I had been memorizing that this year, uh, Romans 8, chapter 8, and this verse pops into my head for Romans 8, Romans 8, 6. You have it, I believe, in your notes, that to set, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. That word was not, no longer just a memorized line from the Bible. It was life, and I knew exactly how to apply it. I knew that just there, I just received in that verse everything that is true about God and His Spirit and everything that is good, and I began to just thank the Lord. Father, you are with me. Mandy, your presence is, goes before us. It hems us in before and behind. You are good in all things you work for good. And I just began to put truth into my heart, into my mind. And guess what? Life, peace, inexpressible joy, hope. The hope comes rushing back as I get the mind of the Spirit, and I began to proclaim, I will not walk in fear or discouragement, but that in the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within me, okay? Because He is with us. He is with Mandy. He is faithful. And let me tell you, you can, you can have perfect peace, you can, in this imperfect world. And Scripture tells us, and it's one of my favorite verses, it's in Isaiah, verse 26, verse 3, tells us, you, God, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. It's not anybody that gets perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. So I'm mulling over this verse in my mind just all summer He keeps us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed. I just knew I had to look this up in the Hebrew and understand what's stayed. What are these words? Hebrew, in the Hebrew original language of the Old Testament, the word keep means to watch over, to guard, to look after. So it's just a picture like of our good shepherd, our Savior, who's watching over us to to put life us in a place of peace, but it's for those whose mind. Mind is a word that's not just thoughts, okay? It means, this word means purpose and intent. When your purpose and intent is to be on God, you choose it. You resolve that you will have your mind on the things of God and have the mind of the Christ and the mind of the Spirit and the mind of the truth of the Word of God instead of the flesh. And so stayed. Here's my favorite. You ready? Okay. We're going to purpose to be stayed. Stayed means to lean, to rest, and then to even lie down. That is so incredible. Has anybody ever fainted? I'm thankful I haven't ever fainted. Anybody ever fainted? I know people. I've seen them do it. And I, I began to wonder, and I, so I Googled, when you faint, do you fall back, forward, or sideways? <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Well, the answer is that you fall whichever way you were last leaning. Man, okay, are your thoughts leaning toward the flesh? Or are your thoughts leaning into the spirit? Are they leaning into the flesh of anxiety? Oh, I'm discouraged, I'm down, everything's bad, and I'm worried, and I'm negative, and I'm angry, and I'm bitter, and I'm critical. Are your thoughts leaning towards your flesh that needs to be dead every day in Christ, okay? Or are your 
thoughts leaning into God, into his truth, into who he is, his goodness, thinking on things that are true and good and lovely and excellent, thinking on the Father's thoughts. Which way are your thoughts leaning? You're not going to get perfect peace without the Spirit. Peace is only from the Spirit. It's never in the flesh. It's never of the world. You won't find peace outside of the Holy Spirit, of, outside of God. Amen. So which way are you leaning? Thoughts that lift you up, that strengthen you, or in the flesh? We have a choice. Let's purpose to have our thoughts resting, leaning in Him. What you think about is what you've chosen to magnify, ladies. What you dwell on, that's what you're magnifying, okay? So if we're going to wait, well, this is big. Learn to wait with the mind of the Spirit. Practice it. Second thing, we're going to wait one day at a time, okay, with the mind of the Spirit. See, it goes into it. One day at a time, okay? I get it, guys. I totally agree with Proverbs 13, 12 that says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, okay? It really does. It's hope that just drags on and it just takes year after year after year and it make, it's, it's heartbreaking. So waiting long, waiting long like many of you are, years of waiting, it is not easy. Please listen, everybody. Don't miss this. You got to hear it. Hope doesn't expire. Hope doesn't have an expiration date. And hope is not for tomorrow. Don't start putting your, casting your tomorrow's problems in today. You've got to live one day at a time. Don't borrow tomorrow's problems. We aren't promised tomorrow, okay? We only have today. God's presence is with us today, okay? We have to know and stand on His Word today. Renew our mind today. You can't do it yesterday. You can't do it tomorrow, but you can do it today. You can trust Him today, only today. We only have right now. Pray and ask today. Don't wait. Hope comes when we rely on him now, today, in this moment. You do it one day at a time. You can't figure out if your marriage is going to last tomorrow, but you can work on it today. You can do what you know to do today. You can rejoice in all circumstances today. Pray in the Spirit today. You can't do that tomorrow. Today is only today. You can do it tomorrow when it's today, but tomorrow's not today until it, tomorrow is today. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> this is a simple point, so we're going to move on. Hope has to, if we're going to have a heart of hope and wait well, We've got to do it with the mind of the Spirit, and it's a daily thing, ladies. Do it every day. Third reason, or third way we're going to wait well, is by giving and getting encouragement. And this goes into today. Can we just start layering these? Because he, the writer of Hebrews tells us, he understood the importance of encouragement. He said, encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today. He understood today, so that none of you could be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. And I read that sin, and I'm like, or by just, you know, your flesh deceiving you all the time. So we're not getting, leaning on those thoughts of the flesh and getting deceived by them. We need encouragement every day, and you need to get it for yourself, and you need to be giving it. You need to get it from the, from the Word of God. You need to receive it from the Holy Spirit. And uh, as the Father shares and whispers his encouragement to you, but you also need to give it, preach to yourself. Give your, encourage yourself in the Lord, okay? And you need to 
uh, encourage others, and you need to receive the encouragement from other believers as well. So um, we're carriers of hope. When you're in Christ, hope is in you, and you're a carrier of hope. And um, recently, Craig and I were uh, doing a ministry event, and some t- two moms came up, older moms, like they have adult children, and they were just, hey, Pastor Craig, we're so excited to meet you, and, and just full of excitement, wanted pictures with them, just normal as could be of just, you know, people that are wanting to say hi. And, and, uh, but it was so random at the end because they said, oh, okay, by the way, um, just, it wasn't a prayer request or anything. It was just, yeah, and our, my son isn't walking with the Lord. And the other lady was like, yeah, my two adult sons aren't walking with the Lord. And then they left. And I was like, wait a minute. So I'm at lunch, and I think, no. I get up, so unlike me, leaving my food. I walk over. <laughs> I chase this lady down and go, wait a minute. I, I got to share with you. I've been where you've been, and I don't want you to lose hope. Don't give up hope for your sons. Keep praying. Keep believing. Can I just encourage you? We began to talk for like 15 minutes. And as we were talking to both ladies, and they were like, we need we need support. We've been waiting so long. I said, get, get support. Get in a group. Encourage each other. And what happened was they went from this look of downcast discouragement, and then one of them just, she, she just looked up with eyes that were like totally lit. She said, I just got an idea from the Lord, and it's going to work. I'm going to go home. And, it, and I have no idea what her idea was. <laughs> I didn't need to. I didn't need to know. She knew. She knew it was from the Father, and she was encouraged. And so we left, and we were mutually encouraged by each other. So I had to take the time, and I believe I was sensitive to the Holy Spirit to just take the time and encourage them, and you need to take the time as well. We all, every day, people in your home need encouragement. Those people that, those little people and those bigger people, they need encouragement. We all need encouragement. We need it every day. You're a carrier of hope. If you to wait well. We're doing it with the mind of the Spirit. We're going to do it every day, and we're going to give encouragement. We're going to receive encouragement. So important. And the fourth way to wait well is for you to know, for you to remember that there is weight in the weight. Weight in the weight. I'm talking about W-E-I-G-H-T. There's weight in the weight. There is value in the weight. And let me make that a capital W, or all caps, and let's, the weight of the weight. Jesus is in the weight. Your Father is in the weight. But there's value in the weight, ladies. We don't understand. I don't understand why I have to wait on the, on the things that I'm waiting for, for my friends or for myself or my kids But I have learned in walking with Jesus for over 26 years that I can trust him completely. I trust him. And I know there's value in the weight. I know there's assignments in the weight. Do you remember Paul? Paul in prison for all that time. It's possible to think that maybe the New Testament epistles of Philippians and Colossians and um, was it Ephesians and Philemon? Maybe those wouldn't have been written because they were written while Paul was in prison. They were written while he was in chains. He maybe wouldn't have been able to learn as deeply that he could do all things through Christ if he hadn't had to wait five years in prison and go through all the other crazy stuff he had to go through. Paul had the opportunity in chains to proclaim the name of Jesus to Caesar, the Roman Empire, uh, the Roman emperor of the world. He got to witness to Caesar, and he got to witness to the Roman uh, Jewish leaders. And he did this while under house arrest in Rome. And the scriptures tell us, and I want you to, to see this in your notes in Acts 28, some incredible truth. Acts 28, verse 30 and 31. It says, for two whole years, Paul stayed there in Rome. 
He welcomed all who came to see him. See, people were coming to to his house and he was proclaiming the kingdom of God. He taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does it tell us? How did he do it? He did it with all boldness. Of course, we know he would. He did it without hindrance. He did it without hindrance. Ladies, he was chained. Your storms, your chains, your struggles, your challenges do not negate. They never hinder. They never hold back the power, the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, his purpose. It's never hindered by your situation. It was never hindered for Paul. God had assignments for him in the wait. He has assignments for you in the wait. And they, you're not hindered because of your challenge. In fact, in your weakness, he's, his strength is perfected. And so there's a song that is incredible about, um, and it has this statement. It's about heaven. And it's from Hillsong Worship. And they sing, while I'm waiting... I'm not waiting. While I'm waiting, I'm not waiting. I know heaven lives in me. Heaven, Jesus, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ lives in you. And so while you're waiting, ladies, you're not waiting because Christ Jesus, your hope is alive in you. He's alive. Hope is in us. Hope is in us every day through whatever we're going through. Hope is Jesus. So while we're waiting, while I'm waiting with my girlfriends and waiting for Mandy, I see hope. I see it in me. I see it in them. While we're waiting, I see Jesus. I see my friend who is deeply depending on God. She's becoming more intimate with him because of her challenges. She's getting her identity in him, her security in him as a new single mom. I see my girlfriend who is being supported with prayer and love as she is putting her hope and it's her growing hope in Jesus, learning to trust again because of, and she's seen positive changes, changes now after nine years in her son who's been addicted to drugs. We're seeing it. I see Mandy, my daughter, being an encouragement. She encourages herself in the Lord and she's encouraging others through her challenge. And Jesus is her strength. I have also seen recently a girl we were waiting for, for a miracle. I've seen her move and from glory to glory, from strength to strength, striving in the attitude of her mind. I saw her with life and peace and hope as she was waiting, and now she's no longer waiting. She went to be with our Lord Jesus. But I saw Jesus. I saw hope in her. It's alive in her now as she's ruling and reigning with Christ. And so while they're waiting and we're waiting, we're not waiting. We can all live with a heart of hope. We can all wait well because we can wait with the mind of the Spirit We can do it one day at a time, and we can do it by giving and receiving the encouragement. And we know there's there's weight in the weight. There's value in the weight. Our God is good. He works all things for good for his kids. He does this. He's that good. Paul, the guy that was in prison, the guy... He went through it. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, an incredible truth. He says, for our troubles, okay, but he calls them light and momentary. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs all the troubles. And so, because of that, we are fixing our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Because what's seen is just temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And there's our hope. We have an eternal hope. 
Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in circumstances. Our hope is not in a result. Our hope is Jesus that he's our savior, that he brought redemption to us, salvation to us. The redemption of our bodies is the hope that we are longing for in the context of that Romans 8. It's that we, are, we receive full adoption in the redemption of our bodies. And it's in this hope that we are waiting patiently. We can do it. We can wait well. We have the spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you're so good. You fill us with hope. You give us your mind. As believers, we have the mind of Christ. Father, forgive us when we lean in our flesh into the things that are not of you and get tangled up in that. God, we lean into you. We rest in you. We rely on you. We put our trust in you, and we know you're our hope. And that's incredible. That's beyond amazing. Increase the faith of all of us. Increase our faith. Increase our hope. Help us to wait well. With your eyes closed, I I want to um, ask a question. If you're wanting to to lean in it even more and be all in to say, Amy, I I was convicted. I felt like, oh, wow, I'm not waiting well in my my wait. I'm not living with a heart of hope, and I want to learn to wait well or even better than I have been waiting Would you raise your hand and I want to pray for you? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I I pray right now for every hand that was lifted. Lord, thank you for their honesty. And I thank you, Lord, that this prayer is all about turning to you. We turn to you, Lord. We turn to you in trust. We turn to you with commitment, commitment to do the work of placing ourselves in your truth, renewing our mind. Father, teach us all to apply these truths and live them out, to wait well. Thank you, Father, that you strengthen us day by day, that your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for your amazing faithfulness. Empower us all by your Holy Spirit to wait well, Father, in Jesus' name. And as we're still praying, as we're still having our heads bowed, I know that some of you have come and you do not have what you're listening to. You don't, you've never experienced life and peace and joy that can't be understood. It's, it's supernatural. Hope only comes from Jesus. And I think some of you have realized that you're not living in a relationship with him. You're not walking with him. You haven't received him as your Lord, as your Savior. Jesus took our sins. He became sin in our place because we blew it big time. He did that because he loved us and because he wants to offer us a relationship with him. And if we receive him, if anybody receives him, the gift of salvation, the gift of what Jesus did on the cross, that he shed his blood for us, that we could have forgiveness. When you believe that, when you call on his name, you will have hope living in you. You won't have to wait any longer for hope. And so I just believe right now that there's, there's many of you listening that you've been brought to church tonight and today, and I just pray that you would call out on the name of Jesus right now, that you would ask him to come into your life, and I ask that you would raise your hand and acknowledge that that's you tonight and today. Just raise your hand. We thank you, Father, and let's pray now with everybody who's raised their hand, and we will pray a prayer that's just asking the Father to come in and save us. Heavenly Father, everybody everybody praying. Heavenly Father, I'm yours. I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you were raised again in newness of life. And now I give you my life. Holy Spirit, I pray you would come into my life. 
I am now yours. In Jesus' name, amen. So...